In today's video, we're going to the star excursion balance test. So dynamic postural control, balance, proprioception, all of this is often lost with certain injuries. So the big ones we often think about are ligamentous injuries. So the bigger one is going to be lateral ankle sprains, but also maybe a high ankle sprain. We also lose a little bit of dynamic postural control when we have an ACL injury, let's say an ACL reconstruction. We probably need to start thinking about this as well up towards the hip with things like labral repairs. The problem is that we don't always have a good way to test whether or not someone has a deficit in dynamic postural control. And we also wanna see over the course of time if they restore their symmetry or they're as good as other normal healthy folks to decide whether or not they should return to sport. So the star excursion balance test is nice because we can measure this and we can see if they're establishing symmetry over the course of time and it helps us with our reasoning when folks are ready to get back to their sport. So in the original star excursion balance test, we're actually gonna talk a little about why balance as well as a modified star excursion balance test. There's going to be eight different directions you can reach. So what we've done is we have four pieces of tape and they're about six to eight feet long. We measure them out. We wanna have two pieces of tape at 90 degrees, another set of tape, 90 degrees apart. So what you have are lines 45 degrees and there's eight total of these. So to perform the test, you have your patient, no shoes on, and what we're trying to have is the tip of the gray toe at the point where all the lines intersect. From here, you're gonna balance on one leg, the hands stay on the hips as you go. You're trying to reach out as far as you can in every direction. You lightly tap your foot on the ground and come back to the starting point. So if someone's heel pops up, or if they lose their balance, or if they weight bear on that reaching side leg before they come back, or their hands come off their hip, those are all fails, okay? So you're gonna have your patient do somewhere between four and six warm-up trials. The reason being is that folks tend to get better, 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 better up to a point just because they're practicing the test. So to standardize it from person to person, we're shooting to do four to six warm-up trials. After you've done your four to six warm-up trials, then we're gonna do three actual trials, okay? With your left leg, go through all the points, right leg, all through the points, take three in every direction, and you're gonna take those numbers and average them. So the problem with the star excursion balance test is it takes freaking forever. There's eight directions, you gotta do a lot of math. It just takes so long. If you're a busy clinician, you really don't have time to do that. When the research on this test, what they found is there's a lot of redundancy, okay? So if you do really well on your anterior, medial, lateral, and straight ahead, it's about the same as performing well just anteriorly. Same goes for the other directions. So more recent research, people have been looking at a modified star excursion balance test as well as a Y balance test. And what they're looking at is going to be just the anterior reach, the anterior lateral reach, and the, or excuse me, the, the posterior lateral reach, and then the posterior medial reach, okay? And what you can do is just take those numbers as opposed to taking all eight and it makes your life a lot easier. Next, we have to measure limb length. The reason being is if you're super tall, you're gonna be able to reach a little further, right? So what we do is we take a tape measure and we go from the ASIS here, we go down to the medial malleolus. You basically wanna take the number in centimeters, right? Once you get the leg length, you wanna to try to take your data from previously. So you take the average of three trials anteriorly, and then you divide that by three, then you divide that by your limb length and multiply that by 100. And you can do that for the anterior reach, the posterior lateral reach, and the posterior medial reach. So once you get this data and you're comparing left to right, what is a clinically meaningful change? Basically, if you're different side to side, but it's not a lot different, is that a problem, right? What's the cutoff point for when you say, okay, this is meaningful, we need to intervene. So a difference of 5.9% anterior reach was considered meaningful. A difference of 7.6% in the posterior lateral direction was considered meaningful. And a difference of 7.8% posterior medial was considered meaningful. So if you're rehabbing someone from an injury and you're noticing these differences from side to side, then it makes sense you have some work to do to try to get them back before you return to their sport. So now you have your star excursion balance test data. Now you have to work on building up your balance and proprioception. I have a great video for you of my favorite balance exercises to help improve that. Go check it out.